Hello everybody, I'm Roxy, this is Raccoon Diaz, and before we move forward to the intro and the book that I want to show you today, I just want to say that if you are from or in the US at the moment, I hope you're staying safe and you're supporting the Black Lives Matter movement as best you can. If this is being out there in the streets protesting, remember to wear gear that covers your whole body, protective eye gear, that's super important. Look up like tear gas neutralizers, there are a bunch of homemade ones that are super good. I assume they might be country specific, but here in my country they weren't too expensive to manufacture and, and it was super helpful. Also, if you have to carry a backpack, carry it in the front, not in the back, because that's easier to grab. But if you can get away with a fanny pack, that's even better. Remember to stay hydrated and to know your rights. That's super important. We are not usually very aware of our right to protest until we have to go out there and do it, but we have a bunch of them, so look them up, know them. But if that's not what you're doing, that's okay. There are a lot of funds you can support, a lot of free petitions, and of course, with broader habits that we should be sustaining through time, where you buy, the creators you support, the media you support. There are so many amazing reading lists and watching lists and just creators lists that you can consult and find what best suits your interests and also support. There are a lot of initiatives where you can watch YouTube videos and they generate ad revenue and that is being donated. So there are a bunch of things out there. Um, I'll leave a few links down below but you know, that's only surface level because there's so much and wherever you go, you'll find amazing lists. So yeah, I hope this results in systemic change. If you're not in the US, however, I urge you to look at how these issues are most likely also present in your community. Understand that your neighborhood, your city, your country, get involved there as well. Be aware of how these issues are basic human rights issues and they are widespread all over the globe. It's also important to shine a light and get involved in your nearer community because they might not have such a big platform. And yeah, I hope that the next elections everywhere see a swing towards sanity again. Yeah, so that's it. I don't know how to segue to the video now. Let's just cue the intro and I'll show you the books I bought. And hopefully that will provide a bit of entertainment and relaxation for a couple of minutes for you. Well, I forgot to mention something that was actually my birthday present and this is a birthday book haul. So my dad gave me a one year subscription to the Paris Review. I'm very excited because they actually do deliver to Chile. So they are going to send me four issues. I have no idea when the first issue will arrive, but in any case, my Main motivation for the subscription was actually having access to their whole art of catalog for which I'll be reading and I have been reading one article every day and I was hoping to do a bonus wrap up of all these articles and tell you my favorite ones, the ones that I didn't like, etc. So I'm very excited for the project. That was my actual birthday present and then I just got these other books using my birthday as an excuse. Back to the video. As I mentioned in a previous video, my local chain bookstore that carries books in English at reasonable prices just started making um, despachos. How do you say despachos in English? Oh my god. Um, deliveries. Oh my god. Okay. Um, just started delivering again. I mean, I've never actually bought books for delivery because I like going to bookstores, but you know, quarantine lockdown measures and they also they had a lot of uh, good prices. I'm very excited about all of these books and I am going to try to get to them by the end of this year. So there you go. That's the new thing I'm trying. Actually reading the books I'm buying. <laughs> Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. I apologize also because all of these are sealed so the, you know, flare but I don't want to open them until I absolutely have to. Madame Bovary. I've never read any Flaubert before and I tried him before, but I didn't like the translation and so I gave up. But now I have this new translation by Lydia Davis and I'm very excited. Then I have um, Roald Dahl's Matilda, illustrated by Quentin Blake. I've never read Matilda. Yep, I think it's time to change that. Also because I do love Roald Dahl. I think even his children's fiction is so funny and dark. So yeah, I just need to read Matilda. Then I have Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. I've never read any Anne Bronte. Um, it's the only sister I've never read anything by. I am saving it for Victoria though. Then I have 
War and Peace by Lev Tolstoy. Let me tell you, two months ago, I was about to say I was never going to read this book. It just didn't seem like something I would like. And then suddenly this Russian literature fever just overtook me and I've been buying and reading Russian literature related things like crazy. So yeah, War and Peace. And this is translated by Constance Garnett, who was like a very interesting Victorian era translator. She has her detractors as well as her supporters, but I'm enjoying her translation of Anna Karenina like crazy. I actually wrote an entry on my blog about it because I'm so obsessed that's where I'm at. You can find the link down below. Maybe I will save this for Victober also because in a very roundabout way, it counts. Then, of course, continuing the music craze, I got, oof, oh, I should be showing, okay, never mind. What to listen for in music? Aaron Copland, uh, with a new appreciation by Leonard Slatkin. This is apparently really good to understand music better from like the structural sense. Hopefully it will be good and it will teach me a lot. So The Tempest by Shakespeare. I have been craving Shakespeare a lot, but other than Twelfth Night, which I do intend to reread soon, I don't have any of my Shakespeare here, either read or unread. So I had to get some and this was one of the few that I don't own that I really want to read soon. So there you go. I've never seen or read The Tempest, so I am excited. Then I have The Signature of All Things by Elizabeth Gilbert. I've never read any Elizabeth Gilbert. I do own Eat, Pray, Love, but I haven't read it. This is about a botanist and I think it takes place in the Victorian period. Maybe not. Yeah, 1800s. It's kind of chunky. Um, so it seems like the kind of book that I can binge when we go back to spring because it's winter and I'm not in the mood for it currently, but I will be soon. A book I am very much in the mood for right now, but I don't know how soon I'll get to it, is The Ambassadors by Henry James. I've been craving classics lately, especially early modern classics, and Henry James is perfect. I've read um, the Daisy Miller one, didn't really love that one, but I have faith that other works I might enjoy better. And this is about a guy who goes to Paris to basically get a cousin back, I think, because like his cousin has been wasting his life away, but then he gets to Paris and it's all wonderful and decadent and he loves it and he becomes part of that too. So that sounds super interesting. Then I finally caved and got Remarkable Creatures by Tracy Chevalier. I wanted to read the girl with the pearl earring for such a long time and I do own it but it's not here so I just got Remarkable Creatures it was on sale Natalie from Curious Reader really really liked it so I'm, I'm looking forward to it it's a good companion to The Fossil Hunter I think I've thought about reading them like side to side but I really wanted to read The Fossil Hunter this month which I honestly don't know if I'll get to so if I don't I'll pair those two together this is about two women scientists and that's how it's relevant. I think also in Victorian times. It's very interesting um, and it's supposed to be great. More Russian literature for you. Dead Souls by Nikola Gogol. I'm sorry. I'm very excited because the devil is in this one and supposedly it's like super uh, snarky and interesting and funny, so I'm looking forward to this one. I'm so glad that this was on sale because I was about to get it a couple of years ago or months, I don't know, like some time ago I was about to buy this and I didn't because I wasn't going to read it right away and it was full price, but now I got it on sale. I am going to read it next month maybe, so watch out for that. Two books that I don't know if I will get because I bought them, but there was some problems with the editions and I'm trying to see if I can get them in other editions, but if not they are just going to give me my money back, but hopefully they will get here because I want to read them. One is The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. I talked about this in my June TBR video. Clearly, it's not here. And I've been reading Anna Karenina, so spoiler alert, that's how that turned out. And then also Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. I am really looking forward to reading this. Man's journey about him. Because this is supposed to be a great American classic. Yeah, I'm looking forward to all of these books. I rarely buy books thinking that I will read them right away unless it's like literally the next book that I'll pick up. So this is a whole new experience for me. 
Anyways, that was this video. I know I owe you my May wrap up. It's just that I filmed this first because supposedly it was going to be easier to edit, but I've messed up so badly. I don't think that will be the case, but I hope you enjoyed it. And my May wrap up will come later this week. Stay safe, stay engaged and read as much as you want to because reading is my highest source of happiness at the moment. So I hope you find that too. I don't, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. This is, has been a rough video <laughs> to film. Let me know if you want to read any or all of these books and what are you currently reading? What have you bought recently? That's a good one. And see you next time.